Thank you. Thank you for your kind introduction. Uh, dear chairs, uh, dear colleagues, really a great honor for me to speak to you about uh, the, the newly uh, updated Chinese guideline as mentioned by uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, I how to say, Mr. Brook. Philip. <laughs> it is very long. Um, we, uh, so the, 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 this is my disclosure. So perhaps everyone knows this slide very well. Well, we can see that the, the, in 1992, the, the China started to incorporate the HBV uh, vaccination program into the uh, vaccination, immune, per, uh, immunization. Well, since 2002, the vaccine is free. Then after three years, 2005, everything, including injection fee, is free. Then since 2012, we, we conducted a triple elimination program, including HIV, syphilis, and HBV in the, uh, uh, all the women. Now, this slide is uh, not very clear. I say it's, uh, the, the blue line, uh, the, the green line, actually is unpublished data. That's a new data, national survey. Uh, it's not a, a, it's not a single report, but it's a national survey. We can see that the prevalence in the general population may age from 1 to 50, uh, 60, around 6%, now 5.86. Now it's on the way to, to publication. So if you compare with uh, that in uh, surveyed in two, 1992, nearly 10%. Now we can see nearly 40% drop in, in, the, in the prevalence of surface energy in the general population. While in the young age group, of course, the, the reduction is, is even more dramatic. We can see now, we can see the bottom, the blue line, the, the green line, that you see that is very, very low now already. So now we, we can see also the price, the price of uh, antecovir, tenofovir, and also TAF become very, very low. Actually, each month it costs only one or two dollars. So every year less than, of course, less than thirty dollars. <laughs> so all, uh, compared with the with the previous, uh, over ninety percent of reduction. So this is a slide just showing a publication by our group. We can see that's the volume in the, in the left panel showing the volume increased, whereas the cost in the right panel decreased. So we can see more patient benefits of treatment. <coughs> However, still the problem is for we can see the, 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 the bottom part is the prevention or the burst dose, timely burst dose, three dose or, or even at big use or nearly 100% excellent prevention. But for the treatment, for diagnosing treatment, it is still very, very low. So that's what we need to do, maybe massive uh, uh, screening and massive trust. So this is published by the, the, the Polaris, uh, the, the CDA. Uh, you see, they also report around 6%. Therefore, in, in, in last year, we published the updated the new guideline. So the first version in 2005. So I, I participated through all this updating of the guideline. This is a new one uh, published. Now this is the English version. We can see they have 33 recommendations, including almost every aspect of, of, of this. But for living, uh, limited time, I will focus on some of it. One is expanded screening for surface energy and recommended use the sensitive DNA uh, quantification in China. So we see in health, uh, health uh, checkups and the medical setting, care setting, and also for those at high risk population, or we encourage or actually require the screening for hepatitis B. We also recommend use the high, highly sensitive uh, HPD assay with a low limit of quantification, 10 to 20 IU per ml then not every region have this such a low, uh, uh, low limited detection. Then most importantly, the, the, the update is expanded antiviral treatment indication. So you can see we also simplified. So antiviral therapy is recommended for all patients with quantifiable, I would say quantifiable HBDNA. There are no threshold. 
no uh, uh, more than 10 to the power of 3 or 4 before we have that. But quantifiable and persistent elevation of LT, just one upper limit of normal, not two. So, of course, excluding other causes. So, then, of course, for others, that's the general. In other words, for all patients with detectable or quantifiable HPV DNA, regardless of HPV DNA level, if one of the following is met, age older than 30 years, family history of HPV related as cirrhosis or SCC, non invasive tests or pathology indicate significant inflammation or fibrosis, or HPV related extra hepatic manifestation. So, all this, the lower part actually is uh, for the special population. We don't need to care about the ALT level. The, the upper part is the normal, uh, is the, for the regular one. So all this is, I think this is uh, the, the core for uh, this um, uh, upper, uh, update. For cirrhosis, we have even more aggressive. For antiviral therapy, it's recommended for all patients with cirrhosis and who are positive for surface antigen, uh, either for compensated cirrhosis or decompensated cirrhosis, They're regardless of the ALT level, HPV level, or E antigen status. So this is also a very, very um, uh, step, big step forward. Of course, we need to identify other causes for the cirrhosis, such as alcohol, obesity, diabetes, autoimmune liver disease, or genetic liver disease. We, we need to do that. But most of our patients with cirrhosis, we have more aggressive uh, approach. Then another approach, is, uh, the update is a more stringent criteria for stop, stop of nukes. You can see for a positive one, E antigen loss is also preferred and a point for discontinued nukes. If, of course, someone or the, the, they, are, they want to stop the nukes, it can be attempted if they have normalization, ALT, ALT uh, HBD undetectable, E engine zero converted after one year of treatment and consolidated for another three years. So totally, totally four years. And most importantly, the surface engine less than 100 IU per ml. This is very stringent. So uh, of course, the patient have to be closely monitored if they, can, they want to uh, uh, stop the nukes. So for inactive patients, of course, e surface antigen loss is uh, the, the desired uh, end point. So this is just uh, the, the, the evidence supporting the why we use 100 IU per ml as a color of value for surface antigen. You can see those, the, the lower, the, the, you can see the line here. I, I don't know how to use this. <laughs> okay, anyway, we see the, the, the lower <laughs> line showing that, that the patients with surface antigen level less than 100. So you can see relapse rate of stopping is much lower compared with those higher levels of surface antigen. So this is, of course, this is one study. Oh, we have more studies like this. The lower, the better, but 100 seems a, a cut of values. Then, well, that in China, another one is Chinese doctor try to use the packed interferon add-on therapy, but only for highly selected patients. So what is highly selected? They're already on nukes for some year, long time, attribute in undetectable, E antigen converted, and surface antigen less than one, uh, the 10,000, uh, now 1,500, 1,500. Then in that patient, we can consider add-on pagliniferum if the patient would have a, uh, the surface antigen loss. Uh, that's the, the baseline character. Another one is untreatment characters. If the surface antigen level lower than 200 IU or decline more than one log at the half year of treatment, you can continue for one year or even four year, uh, two years if the patient would like. However, if the patient still have a certain level higher than 200 IU, uh, after half a year of treatment, we, stop. We, we need to stop the interferon and continue the nukes. So 
this slide showing the evidence supporting the iodine therapy. Because in China, a lot of patients, some patients, I would say, not a lot, a lot some patients are very keen to get their surgeon loss because this gives them some uh, psychological and social benefit, I would say. But from, you can see this, this study, uh, you can see if patients have a higher baseline attribute in uh, surface energy level, higher than, uh, than uh, 1,500, uh, uh, then the chance to achieve surface energy loss at one year is very low. Then most importantly, after half a year treatment, if the still the surface energy higher than 200, then the, none of them have surface energy loss. Similarly, even you continue to two years treatment, if still uh, after six months of treatment, you still have a higher surface engine, surface engine higher than 200, then still very low rate of easier uh, surface engine loss. Whereas for those who can achieve the surface engine less than 200 IU at half a year, you can achieve 50 or even to 60 percent of surface engine loss but still just a half, but these are already much higher than the general population. So it's a highly selected population. Then another one is we, we more actively manage low level viremia, we call the LLV. After one year treatment, we can see with this nukes, if still have a <coughs> attribution level more than 220, about less than 2000, then we, we, we recommend switch to or add on the other one. So that's very easy. Lastly, in China, some doctors also like to use maybe add on pegatin ferrum, but this is not, not routinely used. Just for some very experienced doctors, they like this. So then why we, we recommend this? This is also from a study. You can see the patient with nukes on more than one year, then 200 of them still have low viremia, LLV, you can see. The left panel showing if we, we change the treatment, we, we add on or switch to other one, the, the uh, attribute, the, the uh, sustain, the R part mean sustain, maintain a virological response, that means DNA less than 100 IU uh, is, uh, is, is, uh, uh, is low, uh, whereas for LLV patients, then the, if you don't change, then, then it's not good. The right panel shows exactly the, the color code is not so good. If you change, then the DNA uh, undetectability is good. So the, the red one, I would like to use the green one, <laughs> but use red one. If you don't change, continue our treatment, so the probability of achieving DNA undetectability is very low. So that's our uh, evidence. So also we, now this guideline see more active treatment for children. This is also changed our idea. Before we say children, we don't need to treat, not in hurry, but they found that for children less than six years old, between one and six years old, actually response rate to interferon to uh, nukes are better than those older than six, seven, six or seven year old. So that's why we rec recommend if the patient have any fibrosis or cirrhosis, you need to start treatment. For those, even without, uh, uh, without elevation of HPV DNA, uh, 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 ALT levels, you, we need to maybe do liver biopsy. If you have evidence of uh, necroinflammation or fibrosis, we also need to treat if they are age less than seven year old. So this is something uh, from study from China. This is also, you can see, well, this, you can see the, the, the group, age group. Then the left panel column showing that uh, those age older, uh, younger than uh, seven years old, the e engine clearance and the surface engine clearance is very high. Whereas those older than seven years old, almost like the, 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 the adults. So that's why we recommend. Of course, this is a little bit controversial because the, the, the young kids, very young kids receiving interferon a little bit <laughs> too harsh, mm -hmm. but maybe only in experience centers. So lastly, this is actually summarized by Polaris, by, by CDA. You can see this is China guideline. I will summarize, to test more, to treat more, to treat earlier, and 
treat longer. So maybe that's that's what the, what I, I said. You can see uh, the number is not so accurate now, but we can see that the the if we follow this guideline, a lot of people, the proportion of people who are eligible for treatment would be increased dramatically. Maybe that's the key of our uh, guideline. Uh, Alex, just thank you for attending. This is some modeling study from China testing all patients the cost effective. The, this is a very complex, but they say to test all people would be cost effective. Another one, uh, I'm also co author of this, it's also a modeling study showing treat all patients with safety engine positive, regardless of DNA or ALT. Also, the best way to, uh, to, to achieve. The, the, the WHO go before 2030. So that, that's the, the ideas. Then the, again, this another modeling with um, Samuel Su. I'm also a co-author. You can see if you delay the treatment, delay the one year, three year, or five year to achieve the 80% treatment rate, then you have to pay much higher price, not only uh, for money, but also have more much more additional deaths due to SCC or cirrhosis. So uh, I would like to thank you for your attention.